Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. Um, as I say, my I will give you a, a brief introduction to where the company is right now. Uh, uh, we'll of course discuss our results for the for the quarter. Um, but for those that are less familiar with uh, AAC uh, Clyde Space, well, we are a space company. We have been operating for about twenty five years um, in a variety of in a variety of um, different types of. Uh, Parts of the business. So we have uh, we started very much as being a supplier of components and parts for the space industry. Over the years, we have actually grown into building our own satellites, launching them, and then operating, owning and operating satellites. So we have uh, we have launched more than thirty satellites, uh, far more than thirty satellites over the last few years for ourselves and for some of our customers. Um, and uh, we have about one hundred ninety employees around the world. Uh, and currently, we own and operate 10 in-orbit satellites, actually. As of uh, last week, we own and operate 11 satellites in orbit, although one is still in uh, one is still inside its pod waiting to be deployed. And we're very much focusing on providing solutions for the, the maritime tracking, uh, for the forestry uh, and the farming uh, um, industries uh, on Earth. And we see quite a big growth in the demand for that kind of information. From uh, from farmers, from foresters, but also from uh, from ship owners and uh, shipping authorities, as our world changes, we become more and more dependent on how much food we can produce, how much our oceans are uh, polluted, or they are, or how we are using our oceans. So there is quite a lot of demand for that kind of uh, information. I just uh, just give you an idea of what we make. Uh, so we do space products. That is our uh, business line. Um, that delivers components for other um, space companies and also for some terrestrial companies that are doing uh, and, and terrestrial organizations that are doing uh, work with space. So for instance, we, we also supply uh, instruments for, uh, for large telescopes, for large radio telescopes, um, particularly in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, we have quite a big business around that, that part of the, the technology. And we do that because the same technology we use for that uh, is, is the technology we use for weather forecasting from space. We then have a, a business where we do space missions. This is uh, where we actually use those products, those components, the computers, power systems, and we bring them all together into making satellites that we then sell to, to our customers around the world. And then we started seeing a few years back that many of those customers would say to us, we don't actually want to, to own satellites because that comes with infrastructure and knowledge and you need to know how to do it. What we really want is the service, is the data that comes from those satellites. And because of that, we started uh, delivering data and services to customers um, in several models. Uh, but what we see is that that is the area where we see biggest growth uh, for, for our business. Uh, it's not only an area that is growing fast, but it's also an area where margins are much higher. So while on hardware, uh, you have margins between 10 and 15% net margins, uh, th that is. Uh, in data and services, you can have margins in the 30, 40% net margin and, and higher even. And as such, we see that as, as a big engine uh, to drive the growth of our business. And, and just to, to, to summarize how, what we are doing right now, uh, we are providing a variety of data, as I said, to the maritime domain, to the, the, the maritime users, to farmers, and to, uh, to forest managers. Uh, and we are providing that in the basis of, uh, we set the, the satellites, we design them, we build them, we put them in orbit, and then uh, we provide the data and the service those, those operators need. And we, we have three models uh, for accessing that data. We've got the subscription model, that is the one that is increasingly popular. Uh, and this is very much about uh, supplying uh, the data as you need it. You come to us and say, I need a certain amount of data and we supply you that data. Uh, we have uh, paper access. We have people that just want to access usually historical archives. Uh, so they are just interested in, uh, in, uh, sub in accessing uh, the archive or accessing a small amount of data for a, for a day or two, while the, sub the subscription model is usually seen as a yearly renewal or multi-year renewable uh, um, subscription or data delivery. And then we've got 
secure capacity. That is, uh, when customers come to us ahead of time and they want to have specific access to a number of satellites for a number of years, um, usually we will build specific dedicated satellites for these customers. Uh, they will put it on payment, uh, and we will actually build that satellite for them and then operate the satellites for a certain number of years, delivering data to them. And that's a model that is quite interesting for some, some organizations that are making the transition from more traditional owning your own satellites uh, and then selling data from those satellites, and then now they don't want to own those satellites. But we are seeing quite a lot of interest in these models. And we do these from a range of locations in the world. So we have several companies. Um, the group is made up of several companies. They tend to specialize in, in specific things. Um, but of course, there is also an aspect of uh, geographical distribution. We want to access different markets. So we have companies in, a company in the US to actually access the, the US market. We have a company in South Africa to allow us to access the African market. Uh, we also have partners we work with in Asia. So we have, uh, we have quite successful business in, in Japan and Korea, for instance. Um, but these companies tend to specialize in different things. Uh, so we have companies that are producing computers, the power systems, um, and the attitude control systems for the satellites. And then we have a few others that are very much specializing in building satellites and others that specialize in actually using the data uh, from those satellites in owning, operating, and then uh, selling the data from those satellites. Uh, you might have seen that recently we, annou we announced that we are acquiring a company in Sweden um, called Spacemetric. Uh, the transaction hasn't closed yet. Uh, but that is a highly specialized uh, company in the processing of data, imaging data, so pictures uh, from space. And, uh, and they have a long history and a long experience of actually converting pictures that the satellites take into uh, something that can then be used on the ground to monitor forests, monitor crops. Uh, and so they will, be, they will bring to the company, to the group, that capability that we didn't have until now. So in terms of the results, uh, I put the results here for the first half of the year. Uh, so the results up to, up to now, uh, in terms of this quarter, the, the second quarter was a, a less good quarter than what we wanted it to be. Uh, we are now at about 125 million sec um, accumulated revenue for the year with an edit of minus 3.8 um, and because of these results, we have actually given new guidance for the year. So we had originally uh, planned to be 430 to 500 million sec for the year. We now expect in terms of revenue to be on the 350 to 400. And the main reason for, for these have been delays with our suppliers. So we've got a few suppliers that have been late in supplying us, uh, what means that we can't actually progress some of our projects as quickly as we wanted. Uh, we, we do rec uh, revenue recognition as we go along. And so we will have occasionally these events where a big supplier that has one big milestone will affect quite substantially our, our uh, revenue for the, the quarter. Uh, we also had some delays on project awards. Um, some of the projects that we, we signed in the first and second quarter uh, of uh, 2024 were projects that we originally were negotiating and expecting later in 2023 or right at the beginning of 24. Uh, when they came a bit later um, in the year, they have actually reduced how much uh, revenue we could take from them. But unfortunately, it's not as we can just take the people that were supposed to be working on those projects and go on to other projects. Uh, as as we, we have teams set up uh, and the customers are, they don't tell us we are gonna sign three months from now there. They keep telling us, oh, well, we, we just need to sort out something with their customers in most cases. And so they, they are moving us on a month by month or a few week or week by week uh, schedule. So that has affected how, how we are, uh, how we are um, set for the year, but we are still uh, planning um, uh, a growth. So in terms of revenue, as I said, the guidance now is between 350 million sec and 400 million sec uh, for, uh, for the year. This is still substantial growth from last year in the 30% range. Um, we maintain our guidance of a positive EBITDA uh, between five and 10%. Uh, and, and we, 
have a very strong backlog. Just to give you an idea, uh, all this revenue is already on our backlog now. Um, and that backlog continues to grow. We are now at 660 uh, million sec. Uh, and, and, we ex and we see the market continue to be quite, uh, quite supportive of our, of our business. So, so we see forward that uh, despite some, some setbacks and some difficulties on the, on the quarters, uh, we see that the overall landscape for the company is still very strong. Uh, and just to, to show you a little bit um, what we have been doing uh, just last last Friday, uh, we we launched another of our satellites for the AIS for maritime for maritime services, uh, Sedna One. It was launched on Transport Eleven launch. Uh, and this is the satellite is, is a next gen is a new generation of these AIS satellites of these uh, automatic identification ship uh, system uh, ship detection. Um, satellites uh, and it will add quite substantial capability to our constellation for AIS. Um, so we have this one, we have another one to be launched in, in October, but also on this launch, uh, and although we didn't actually build a satellite, we build large parts of it. So our, our friends and colleagues at uh, OHP Sweden uh, actually built the Arctic weather satellite. Uh, this is a, a new Type of satellite that is uh, being designed that has been designed for the UMETSAT, the, the European Satellite uh, Meteorological Satellite Organization, uh, through the European Space Agency, and this is a, a satellite that will help us to predict weather much more accurately than what we are doing right now. So, the objective in the future is to build a constellation of these satellites. This is the first one, uh, and we, our team in Gothenburg, built the payload. As you see there, the payload and our team. Uh, very happy on the day that they shipped out that payload to, to OHP Sweden. And we also, in Uppsala, we, we actually built the computer for the satellite and the power system for the satellite. Uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, so far, uh, what we have designed has worked fine and it is delivering its, its, um, its business. And so now we look forward to the constellation that will come and where we see, see quite a large potential to build uh, several of these instruments and uh, supply several computers and power systems to our customer. And talking a little bit in terms of the future of uh, where we are, we are heading. Uh, so we continue to grow our hardware business. Um, we, as I say, we see quite a large potential uh, on, on supplying products and components for constellations. You might have seen that uh, we have recently announced that we, we signed the licensing agreement uh, with the company um, to supply them, to allow them to supply our subsystems um, to, to their satellites, to use them on their satellites. Um, and, and that is just one of many uh, uh, contracts that we continue to, to see in this, in this area. Um, we are seeing a move to bigger satellites, what is good for us. We, we actually design and, uh, and manufacture uh, products, space products that are actually to be used also on larger satellites. Uh, and as, as those larger satellites are used in constellations, we see great potential there. At the same time, we are growing our own proprietary constellation. So we, we now aim to currently, as I said, we have 11 satellites in orbit. Uh, our objective right now is to, to have another four for Earth observation. I'll talk a bit more about that uh, next. Um, and then to, to, uh, to, over the next few years, have another 12 for uh, maritime services. And we see those as, as areas where we, we are ready, not just doing work on selling data, but actually on developing applications. And, and this is where we see another big opportunity for the company. Uh, so we currently have several programs um, running to develop applications from that data to solve problems on Earth. Um, and we see great potential, not only in terms of the, the commercial market, but also getting support from governments to do that. So just to give you a, a flavor of what we are doing, so we, have a, um, we are currently building a constellation of four Earth observation satellites. These will provide data for forests and agriculture. So they take pictures. Uh, and they take nice pictures at uh, a resolution that is not very common at this stage, that uh, there is a gap in the market, we identify the gap in the market, uh, and we can now do these satellites for a much lower price than people were doing a few years back. 
So we can actually offer a very compelling uh, price point to our customers. Uh, and we start these as some of you might be familiar with a program we have running with the European Space Agency called Expansion. Uh, and through that, we have actually developed a lot of the designs that are now being used on these satellites. So these satellites will be part of that expansion program. Uh, and, uh, and the design, all the design was self-funded, so was part of the expansion program. But then we have built the satellites, uh, we are funding them, um, and they will provide quite substantial amounts of data. And we signed, over the last month, we actually signed our first contract for data. So this is with Scottish Forestry. This is a, an organization that manages the forests of Scotland. Um, and they, they actually contracted us to provide a service. It's not just about data. This is about us actually giving them maps of areas of forest that are under stress. Uh, so they want to identify uh, stressed areas with, uh, with, uh, that are being attacked by insects in forests, and we can actually do that from space. So we did quite a lot of work in developing the product. Um, and, and we are now in the process of actually just waiting for the satellites to go up, and then we can start the process. So the first launch of this satellite will be in 2025. I have, I have originally uh, earmarked this for 2024, but our, our key supplier uh, announced that they couldn't supply, uh, for, for, for their own reasons, they couldn't supply uh, their part of this, uh, of this satellite in time. So we are now moving to 2025, but we already have a, book, a launch booked and everything. And, and this is what these satellites will do. Um, this is imaging forest. Uh, and so these are images from other satellites that we, um, we downgraded to look like these ones, like the ones we are going to get. Um, so these are from satellites that are actually more used for military applications than for uh, this kind of uh, forestry monitoring. But we then actually get that data uh, and we make it look like the data we are going to get from our satellite. This is for the prototyping. Uh, and what you see on the left is uh, those images, those original images. The, these are images that come from satellites. Um, so in the visible bands and in the near infrared. And you then use these data. You, you, you use the, the, the colors that, you, that the satellite detects to effectively find out the areas of the forest that are being affected uh, by, in this case, by a beetle uh, insect. Um, and what you see on the two images on the, on the right, on the two pictures on the right, is then the output of our algorithm. So we develop, develop the algorithm that actually detects these, these uh, stressed areas of forest. And then you can just give a map to the managers of those forests, uh, and they know what to do. And as we see, um, as we see our climate changing, as we see uh, different temperatures in, uh, in our forests around the world, we are seeing that many of these forests are now under threat from, uh, from pests and, uh, and from disease that were not common 10, 15, 20 years ago. And so there is quite a lot of interest in being able to monitor these forests at large scale. This currently, this, this job is done by helicopter. You can imagine that an helicopter sees small per areas of, uh, of land. It costs quite a lot of money. And it is not very good for the environment to fly helicopters continuously to do this work. So now we can do this uh, from space. Uh, and there is a lot of interest, not only, so we have one contract on this one and through that contract, we now have several people around the world talking to us and asking us, oh, can we have something similar? So this is actually something that we see as a great potential. Um, and at the same time, we are developing applications for the, the farming industry. So, and they use very similar techniques. We use very similar techniques to do that. And at the same time, as I said, um, we continue our maritime services constellation. So we already have, uh, a constellation of satellites that do ship tracking. Um, that is used, you see an image there on the, on the right, uh, one, one example uh, taken on one day over Europe, uh, detecting ships on the coasts of Europe, uh, of Northern Europe. And, and we are actually going forward on that technology, not only adding more satellites, as I said, we launched one last Friday to, to extend, to expand our constellation, but we are also uh, developing the next generation of these systems called VDS that actually allows not only the detection of ships, but allows us to communicate back to them. And this is quite, uh, quite of, of quite a lot of interest because not only allows uh, an increase in the safety at sea, uh, 
um, because by basically allowing us to uh, uh, communicate alerts to, to the vessels, to the ships, but it also allows us to uh, do things like identification of ships. So Coast Guards are very interested in this in this uh, technique because they will be able to actually challenge the ship when it says, I'm such and such. They can ask, really? Prove that to me. So this is something that we are seeing growing uh, quite substantially. Um, it's expected uh, VVS will be a mandatory uh, uh, technology on board vessels by about 2025, 2026. Uh, it's currently going through the the, the technical committees of the International Maritime Organization. Um, and we want to be the first ones to provide the service. Uh, currently, we have one satellite in orbit already with this capability uh, that is now undergoing testing. Uh, it's just a demonstration. We will have another one uh, in October. So the, the next Sedna satellite will also include the VDES terminal. And we are working with, uh, with a customer and partner on a constellation of satellites already. And our ambition is to then actually have more satellites of our own. Um, and as I say, there is quite a lot of interest for this technology, not just to tr ship tracks, to track ships, but like, for instance, on the OSCAR project we are doing uh, currently uh, with several companies in the UK, where we are actually um, developing techno techniques using this technology to monitor uh, offshore wind farms. So this is an area that is growing quite substantially. Um, and there are several services that we can provide from satellites to help monitor and manage those, those uh, farms, those wind farms. So again, uh, we are not just providing data, we are also developing applications. We are also developing uh, the, the, the downstream capability to use this data. And, and so I will, I, will, I will close here. Um, I'll stop here. Mostly, I, I hope I have given you a a feeling for where the company is and where we are going. Uh, we continue to, uh, to strongly believe in our strategy. We, we have the, the capability, we have the people, we have the knowledge, we have the experience to, to grow the, the different parts of our business, continuing to grow hardware business, but also growing quite substantially our data and services business. This is an area that we, we see having great potential for us and is already starting to deliver. So thank you very much. I'll open the floor to questions. Um, Louis, can you? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. I'm back. Yeah. I'm sorry about the audio. You you get a, a poor microphone feed, but but no, it no, will no. be better for the online viewers and for us as well. But just just ask if you if you don't pick up a question. Um, I feel a bit bad, Louis, because, uh, <laughs> I mean, you're quite a company and you've come a long way. Uh, but this is also 2024. This is the moment when you go from the red to the black, you know, for EBITDA mm -hmm. and for EBIT. And we were expecting that for, for mm -hmm. Q2. Now you you start to see where I'm getting at. That for yeah. for us as investors, you know, investors, we mm -hmm. as exciting as things are, we live by the numbers and we also die by the numbers. At least our portfolios, uh, unless our name is Mike Lynch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. You know Mike Lynch? That's, mm. Yeah, that's the guy who went down on the base and sailboat. Um, but back from sailboats to a C Clyde space. Uh, so your Q2 was surprising. We were, and quite a few of us, I think, were expecting, uh, you know, you had such a nice track record of, of, uh, of revenues and sales uh, going up quarter to quarter. But, but uh, you hit us with a, with a cold number, minus 29%. That said, even so, your mm. cash flow <laughs> was in line with a much higher sales mm. number. So, so that, that saved your, your bank account. So, so there's, it doesn't appear to be an immediate risk for more, uh, you asking for more money from, from shareholders. So now I've given you the low sales, the high cash flow. And I know the thing you, you uh, uh, sorry, I will 
I'll release that. Um, yes, please talk some about the Q2 uh, revenues, cash flow, uh, and, and why and how, and what to look forward to in Q3 and Q4. So, yes, I, I, I would be lying if I said that I, I thought it was a stellar performance or that I liked uh, that the second quarter. We have had, we have had, as occasionally happens, and particularly in space programs that tend to be quite large uh, and have quite, the cycles are not really quarterly. Uh, many of these, these projects have cycles that are longer. And uh, as I said during the presentation, we had, we have a, uh, coming together of two different things. So we had on a couple projects, we had, uh, we had suppliers that were late delivering to us. Um, and what that means is that our revenue that was supposed to come in that, in that second quarter will have to be recognized later in the year. So it didn't disappear, it just moved uh, to, the, to the right. And in many cases, we have actually done the work. Internally, we have done the work. So our teams have been working on this, uh, but because our we need that part or that component coming from the, the customers, it's a supplier, uh, it moved. This is something that has happened before. Uh, I, I would love to say that will never happen again, but it is something that on occasions in our business happens. Um, between quarters, there can be movement on some, some milestones. We are dependent on other people. Um, likewise, the other thing that affected us on this quarter was signing new contracts. Uh, I usually joke uh, with people that there are many things I can do, but the one thing I cannot do is to go with a gun to the head of the customers and force them to sign. So they sometimes have their own financing uh, rounds, they have their own financing um, entities, and those might be late in financing. So we had several projects, quite large projects uh, that we expected at the close of last year or the beginning of this year that actually only came on the late first quarter or even on the second quarter. Now, what that affects us is our ability to make revenue out of, the, to recognize revenue out of those projects. Uh, as I said, this also has an impact on our efficiency uh, because it means that while we are waiting for those projects, I can't really take the teams out and put them working on something else because this, the, the project is about to begin. We, there is a certain uncertainty. So those two things came together and made our uh, second quarter particularly bad. Now, I expect to recover. As I said, we, we have that revenue already on our books. We have done quite a lot of work uh, with our suppliers uh, to solve those problems. Uh, we, that revenue didn't disappear. That, that income that didn't disappear, that actually is coming, it's just later. Uh, so what we are doing is accelerating many of the processes now, many of the, the work so that we can have a much better third quarter and a much better fourth quarter. Um, and as I say, that revenue is already uh, on the books. So we are, not, we are not having to go, we are not expecting any more uh, to actually uh, meet those numbers. But of course, our sales teams continue to, to, to win new contracts. We have, we have several contracts to win. So one thing that is very important for us, uh, and you mentioned is, is to go into, the, into black numbers, uh, to go into uh, to actually to positive EBITDA. And that is something that I've made very clear to our teams that we are to protect. That is our objective for the year. And everyone is very focused on doing that. Even if we have a reduction on our revenue for the year, uh, as I said, the guidance now is 350 to 400 million sec. That has to be done also on a positive EBITDA. Uh, and, and, and that is quite key for us. And of course, maintaining our cash flow. Uh, cash in the bank is very important. It allows us the stability and the independence uh, to continue to do our business. Uh, without needing extra financing. So, so those are things that, those are targets that the entire management team has. I, I, I spent one day with, a, with my management team yesterday, uh, going through this exactly, going through all the detailed numbers. Um, it's something I do on, on specific sites, I do now on a weekly basis, uh, but also we do it on a monthly basis uh, and we go through these uh, and everyone is very clear about that. Uh, and yes, the, the, the work is there, the, the the orders, the backlog is there, and uh, and we are now in a more stable position with some of our suppliers. Some of these issues that I mentioned have been resolved. So I I, I fully expect to recover, not totally, but to recover quite well over the next couple of quarters. 
you're, you are guiding on sales, uh, and even though you revise it slightly downwards, your your uh, your Q3 and Q4 mm -hmm. <laughs> should be way higher. Uh, that that's your yes. own guidance. Uh, now I know you don't guide on cash flow, but I still would like to maybe maybe I didn't hear it right. But how did you manage the good cash flow with with the uh, lower sales in Q2? Uh, well, th there are there is actually one thing that comes together is if we don't do certain progress, we don't have to pay. If our suppliers don't do their progress, we also don't have to pay them. So yes, we can keep we can keep quite high levels of cash, uh, but we are also very careful with. Uh, when we are doing these projects of actually remaining cash flow positive, um, and uh, so this is something that we always try on our on our projects, make sure. Uh, but there is there is an aspect that um, if if some if they are not delivering to us, we also don't have to pay them. So that that affects our cash flow uh, when the the revenue is not there. But and this year we also had some injections of cash, uh, one of which was due to an unfortunate incident with one of our satellites that failed. But we have a we have a, um, we have an insurance claim on that, so that injected quite a lot of cash in the company. What helped us? Uh, I, I don't see it as effectively what that did was compensate for the loss of that satellite uh, and the, the revenue we would get from it over the years. But we basically got some advanced revenue, so that also helped. I actually, I'm kind of sometimes the suspicious type. So I looked carefully in your, uh, um, counted the number of shares in AAC Clydespace, but uh, Q2 had no single new share issue. Uh, no, no. Yeah, just to make, make sure. No, no. <laughs> you, you'd know of that if we had to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, uh, so. I'll grab the microphone here and see if we find someone in the audience. Here. Uh, regarding the uh, backlog, um, I assume there are many reasons behind that, but what is a normal backlog and how are you going to go about to bring it down? And when can we expect it to be brought down? Uh, and in other industries, companies are sometimes reluctant to take on new orders when the backlog is too large. Is, is that something that might hit you? Um, no, we, we try. It's a fairly complex, it's a fairly complex um, aspect uh, because it depends very much on which part of the business you are talking about. Um, so if we are talking in products, um, large backlogs there are usually easy to uh, to handle because we tend to, we even have, in many cases, we tend to have uh, on the shelf uh, components. So many times the amount, we can very easily actually deliver that uh, to our customers. Satellites is different. Uh, satellites can be quite, uh, if we are talking about missions, it, it can be, Yes, you can have too many in your books and it can be too difficult to actually deliver all of them, particularly if they require a lot of engineering. It's not so much about production, it's about engineering. And we have had a few examples of that uh, over the last few years where, where we had too many satellites going through the books at the same time. So there, yes, there we would be more cautious uh, in terms of the, the number of satellites that we have going through design more than build. Uh, and on some occasions we, tell our customers we can't produce, we can't do it now. We will have to wait for six months. We might have to wait for 12 months. Uh, we, are, we, we are not at that situation. We are not in a situation where we are over. But I would say that uh, if you came to us and said, I want a satellite for tomorrow, I probably would have to tell you it can't be tomorrow. It will have to be in a few months uh, from now. Um, so, so that is how we usually use services. Data and services is very easy to scale uh, and so it doesn't have that kind of uh, that kind of problem and actually a lot of a lot of backlog or some of our backlog is already looking long in in, uh, in time because it is about services and that is services that are delivered over two three four years time i in terms of a, um an ideal backlog value i i wouldn't uh, 
I don't think I've ever thought in terms of that. Um, uh, I would say that the level that we've got right now is one we are comfortable that we can deliver in time. So as I say, uh, probably about half of that is, is, is designed to be delivered for the rest of this year uh, and the rest delivered next year and the years um, after. So I would say that this is a, um, a reasonable, is, a, is an okay level of backlog for what we have in terms of uh, facilities and people. Um, it, it might vary a little bit in terms of the different business lines, um, but it is, uh, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's a comfortable, we don't, we don't aim to do comfortable, uh, but it's a good uh, backlog uh, that we see. And as I say, it's something that we can deliver. We are confident we can deliver this. I mean, the backlog is a negative number, but it's actually an order book. So that's a good yes, thing. Yes. But also, <laughs> Rutger, I agree with you. At some point, an order book has to be realized into invoices <laughs> and, and, and revenues. And the, some of us might remember a Lehman crash 2008, 2009, 2008. Everybody felt so good. And Scania and Volvo, the, the order backlog for, for trucks mm -hmm were sky high, three years production, and then it just disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, of course, but of course, it's an order book, so, so it's, a, yeah. it's a good we, thing. I think, I, think, I think the point, as I say, is it depends on the business. So, for instance, on, on products, this is realized much quicker. So we can actually deliver the, that backlog much quicker. Uh, missions, you're talking about a year and a half, two years. So it's a, a longer backlog. It requires um, longer time, and then on data, these are we try to go for longer contracts. So we are talking several multi-year contracts. That's what we we like. So the backlog there has to be delivered over that over that period. Um, this is one more question, and mm -hmm. and that's from your. You have to a big part highly engaged, uh, you know shareholder base, fan base <laughs> even. Uh, and uh, the discussion we've seen in some places um, uh, is that, uh, well, if Q3 and Q4 picks up quite a bit what you're guiding for, and, it, and that's the coming six months, uh, given also the low valuation of your stock, it's, uh, it's almost it's hard to understand that it's, it's so low. And, and of course, mm -hmm. it's been a struggle for you and it goes a long time. But mm -hmm. all that said, uh, now would be the time when insider buying from management and board would look really good. And a lot of people look for that, but they haven't seen too much so far. Mm -hmm. So what's your comment? I, I, I can't talk for my colleagues and definitely I can't talk for my board. Uh, for my for my points, I, I did some some entire buys last year. I, I'm very limited on what I can buy. Uh, we are pretty much constantly under um, some sort of uh, uh, insider logs, uh, so we have had quite a lot. Is the fact that the company has done quite a lot. Um, but as I say, I, I'm always I'm always happy, and it's, it's something that is my objective. Uh, but I can't talk for my colleagues, and I definitely can't talk for the board. So, so that, that's a question that I, I would direct at them, what their intentions are. I, I wasn't expecting anything else. I just needed to get that on camera. It was yeah. even a, a, an, an assignment from, from one of them that was mm -hmm. emailed to us. Um, we're running low on time. Uh, someone has a quick question and also a quick answer. Okay, follow up from you. <clears throat> Uh, just a question about the insurance policy. You touched upon it in your presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, can you confirm that uh, your satellites are insured, so there will not be a major hit if any one of them fails from a, a technical point of view? Yes, our satellites are insured. So we, we insure our satellites. Uh, the level of insurance depends on Depends on the satellite. So some satellites are launched at the beginning, are insured only for the launch phase. Uh, the the current ones, the ones you are thinking of, uh, they are actually insured for uh, for failure. In some cases, uh, the insurance might be too expensive. 
uh, and it is actually cheaper to launch a second satellite uh, over time. So we might not always ensure uh, satellites um, uh, for failure, uh, but that is an exception that we try not to do. But the market has been very volatile over the last year. So, so we have had, to be uh, frank, we, we have had some difficulties sometimes in placing some of the insurance. So the, 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 our preference is yes, we fully insure the spacecraft. On some occasions, the policies might be restrictive. Uh, but but those are exceptions. Okay, Louis, we are on uh, final time, overtime even. Thank you a lot. We do look forward very much to to your Q3 and Q4 and uh, to eternity and beyond from that, of course. But we start yeah. with the second half of 2024. Hope to see you again. Hope to see you here in person. And, uh, yes, yes. Have a great continued Friday. Thank you from Provera. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time.